Hey guys, welcome back for week three of our study on the parables. Now, Jesus spoke in stories to help his followers understand the spiritual truths he was teaching. Now, these stories were called parables. A parable is a short story that teaches a spiritual lesson. Now guys, stories can also be used to, to help us understand the moral of a story. So the last couple of weeks, we've tried something new. Each week of this series, we're going to have a special word of the week. And whenever I say that word, you all yell it back to me as loud as you can. Now, the word for this week is steward. Let's give it a try. God wants me to be a steward. Perfect. Now guys, God has given each of us special gifts and talents and resources. It's our responsibility to use those gifts wisely. Now, a steward is someone who looks after or manages another person's belongings. But wait, aren't the things I have mine? Nope, no guys, they're, they're not. Actually, everything you have is a gift from God. That includes all your stuff, toys, video games, books, and yes, even your pet. Guys, you're a manager of your stuff, your talents, why you're here on earth. So guys, this week, how can you use the blessings you've been given? Should you selfishly hide them away like the third servant in the parable we just learned about or not? Guys, this week, instead of hiding those talents, guys, try to use uh, those talents to be a good steward <laughs> with what God's entrusted you with. Guys, think of, think of ways that you can use your talents to bless and help others. Now, as you do that, here's what's gonna happen you will be honoring God. All right, guys. Love you. Can't wait to see you back next week. Bye. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. So we're down to one day before the contest stops taking entries. As long as we don't goof off, we should be okay, right? By pain or gain or excessive by strain, in speeding red wagons or on the backs of fire breathing dragons, I agree to uphold the Teller's Club code to tell stories that change the world. We are the Teller's Club. All right, the judges are our age, so we need to go with something that they will connect with. That's how we're gonna win this thing. I like stories about time travel. Again with the sci-fi stuff. Hold on, let's go with that for a second. So this is a main character, obviously a girl. A really, really smart girl. Okay, time for someone to take charge of this train wreck. Right, main character is a really, really smart girl. Let's call her Sarah. So Sarah's going about her normal life. When bam, she falls through a time portal. Okay, so Sarah's walking in the street and she falls through a manhole. Which is the time portal. Sure. Next thing she knows, she's in the year. Five billion and eighty-nine. <laughs> oh. What if the time portal takes her back a day? Only a day? But then everything would look the same. Exactly. Boring. No, that's good. Think about it. She has to avoid running into herself, her friends, and her family. Or what if she does run into her friends and family? She has to play along with her other self. This is starting to make my brain hurt. What if Sarah was given a special gift? That's how she was able to travel back in time. She loses her gift and misses her window to go back and look for it. She's stuck in the past forever! Can we maybe add some lasers or flying machines? Maybe something interesting? That's just it. Sarah's choices are the interesting part. What she chooses to do with her gift changes the outcome of the story. Like the parable of the talents. They have a parable about time traveling talents? No, but Jesus did tell a story about the importance of what God has given us. So let's hear it. Okay, so Jesus told a story about three men who received money from their masters. The master went on a trip. When he came back, he evaluated what each person did with their money. Let's look at the story in a different way. Let's say a family was hoping to go on a vacation. To Disneyland. Ireland. How about Hawaii? 
The family had three months to save enough money to go on a trip. So dad gives allowances to each of his three sons and told them that they need to be wise with it in order to use it on the trip. That's a lot of allowance. Compounded interest. Anyways, at the end of the three months, his dad checks in with his three sons. So the first son invested in a friend's lemonade stand. At the end of the three months, he ended up with double the amount on what he started with. Sweet. Acceptable. The dad said, good job, to the first son. Now he went to the second son. The second son mowed lawns all summer. At the end of the three months, he ended up with double the amount on what he received for allowance. And he had more money to put towards the vacation. Exactly. But then comes the third son. I bet the third son started his own business and made 10 times what his allowance was. Sadly, nah. Then what did he do with this money? Well, he did nothing. But not exactly nothing. He just did nothing productive. He was so afraid of losing his allowance that he hid it under his mattress. At least he had the same amount of money to give back. That's not so bad, right? The thing is, if the dad had kept the money and done something with it, or had given it to one of the other sons, they would have more money in the end. So the moral of the story is, don't keep your money under your mattress. No, the moral is not just about money. It isn't? No, but the point of the story is that we have been given special abilities and resources from God. We must be brave enough and thoughtful enough to go out and do something with our gifts. But how do we know what gifts we're supposed to be using? Look at what you're good at. Think about what you're excited to do each day. And most importantly, think about how your gifts benefit others. What are you writing over there? Our story. I have an idea that just might work. <laughs> <laughs>